This is Skull Watcher um, Skyliner Flex Tube 300P 12 inch telescope. It's one of the best telescopes I've used. It's easy to manage, one person can handle it. It's heavy if you want all the time to move it, but you can do it. And the views I got with this is exceptional. It's really good. I like it. And uh, I recommend if you can afford, if you can find second hand, just get one of these. Um, I'd rather go to, um, sometimes it can be, or well, most of the time it's just a waste of time because you just kind of find uh, simply because most of the time your time will be spent just star aligning to a star or one star makes it really difficult it doesn't work in my opinion so better to go with the manual one if you want a bigger te a telescope that is guided get a 8 inch one on a Dobsonian mount no sorry on an equatorial mount and yeah, just use that. Or Schmidt Cassegrain will do if you use a um, something like a focal reducer to make it more wide angle. Okay, it's a very frosty night tonight, and um, I came, I searched, and I found, I saw it immediately. M fifty one, Canis Venice City. Um, <laughs> it's a double galaxy, uh, one spiral arm extends to the next uh, kind of nearby galaxy. And I just, I'm not here more than two minutes, three minutes. I went to the tail of the Big Dipper, or so major, and from the tail I just went slightly south, and it is there. I found it, that's easy. And I can see another galaxy in the same field of view. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a spot, uh, the other one is the Asian, or kind of near Asian um, galaxy. This is really a good eyepiece for finding objects. I have the Teleview Naglia tape 531mm, but that's a little bit odd at the edges. And definitely you need probably uh, something like a, um, one of those uh, paracores to correct the coma. This one doesn't have coma, it doesn't show any coma. It seems corrected for that. It's 68 degrees, so it has a better part of the field of view of 82 cut down to 68. In the M51, and galaxy, double galaxy. First thing you can see is the cores which are bright, then the edges. And clearly it has a spiral arm. You can see the spiral arm. If you look carefully, it looks almost like a circle, but if you look carefully, you see that some one of them, uh, that bigger galaxy, actually, the arms comes around and then get close slightly to the core, bright core. Oh, I cannot believe the field of view is just littered with the very dimmer nebulosity which are galaxies practically. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Okay, I'm now using the Teleview Ethos 13mm 100 degree eyepiece. And you can clearly see the spiral arms, and one of them actually comes close to the core of the main member of the M51, a pair of galaxies. Uh, I'm going to use a 3.5mm eyepiece, this WA Skywatcher, just to see how it will look for the sake of seeing that if, if does it work with the Dapsonian, or oh, does it work to have uh, such a high power eyepiece with the Dapsonian? Let's do it. Okay, this is a Skywatcher 3.5mm eyepiece. It's WA40, fully multi coated, uh, 70 degrees field of view. It, it doesn't work on the galaxies, definitely. It's too narrow field of view, too 
much magnification you cannot see where you are looking you cannot even focus it because there is nothing in the field of view unless it's a real bright object like a planet it does not worth to have it but if you have a object like a planet to observe bright planets that's something to consider or moon probably does it worth to get something like that hmm for a refractor, yes. For a Dobsonian, no, because you have to practically in this mount is impossible to actually direct it in a way uh, that you can find the target. So I go back to the larger field of view. Okay, now using the APM 13 millimeter eyepiece, and I don't see much difference between this and what I could you see with the. Uh, Teleview Ethos 13mm at least on this target which is a dim galaxy M51 okay, using this 13mm uh, APM 100 degree eyepiece I can see the a uh, notch in the smaller component of the M51 galaxy it is like a darkness you have to use averted vision this but it's clear you don't need much effort it's clear when your eyes get a uh, dark adapter you can clearly see this and uh, also the dark lanes inside the uh, uh, nebulosity of the M51 main component galaxy those define those darknesses, those dark lines define the shape of the spiral. It's very clear. You can see two spiral arms clearly uh, going around in a closed, twisted uh, fashion. Now I'm back to the ETHOS 13mm and immediately I notice a difference because the memory of the APM 13mm is fresh. I can say this is sharper. I can see more details in the M51 uh, double uh, galaxy. Definitely this is sharper and I can see more details. And what I can also add is that uh, M APM 13mm is not parafocal with the uh, ETHOS 13mm. So they are not parafocal, it means that you have to change the focal focus. Uh, it doesn't uh, work like that, that you put one in the place of another and they come into focus. They are not in focus with each other. The interesting thing, I can see the actual North American Nebula. It's so big and so huge, clear. Beside all the star clouds in the Cygnus. Let me try to photograph this. Well, before that, look at the snow and ice crystals and the chicken coop. Okay, I'm now using the Ethos 8mm, of course it doesn't come to focus if you don't use an extension tube. With the extension tube it comes to focus. The telescope is the Skywatcher Skyliner Flex Tube 300P, focal length is 1500, so divide it by that for 8, you see the magnification I'm using. Uh, what is interesting is that I can see Hydrogen 2. Uh, regions in the spiral arms of the uh, M51 main bigger member galaxy. Hydrogen uh, two regions are the star forming regions that have younger stars and are brighter. They appear like uh, patches of light which are brighter than the rest of the galaxy.
Hallelujah. I found the uh, M101. Messier 101. It definitely is bigger than the Messier 51 uh, pair of galaxies that they are. Bigger, but much dimmer. So, uh, it more look like a comet without a nucleus. I don't see any details. Fuzzy, very fuzzy. You can see some, uh, some moments you can see a brighter core, slightly brighter center core. But not like a star-shaped uh, nucleus of a comet. So it's a galaxy. And uh, let me just change the. Uh, this 40 millimeter max vision is the best uh, uh, finder eyepiece that um, I've came across using it. Really lovely. So let's change to a um, different eyepiece just to see what we can see. Okay, I'm now using the APM 20 millimeter 100 degree eyepiece and looking at the M101. Definitely now you can see a brighter, it's very diffuse object, first of all. It's larger than the M51. It's very diffuse. It's almost uh, like a mist. But when you increase the from 40 millimeter 68 degrees to 20 millimeter 100 degrees, Increased magnification give you a better view. You see some mottled uh, patches near the center. Barely, maybe you can see very tight arms. At the center, there is a slight brightness, not much, but there is also a star near the center. So that is a foreground star, I suppose. And there's another foreground star just near the spiral arm, superimposed on the spiral arm to the south of that lower part of that. So, in general, there's not much to see here in this, uh, unless you spend a lot of time just looking at it. But uh, interesting to know that Mess Charles Messier and the uh, contemporary of him, uh, why they um, compiled the, the list at the, of the deep sky objects, just to make the sure that nobody confuses them with the comets. Because they're always there. Comets move. These things are always there. They don't move. Uh, at least we don't see them in our lifetime. And so, in that sense, it's more like a comet. It's a galaxy very far away. Taking your eyepieces to the field can be a risky business because they're very expensive and uh, they can be damaged if you drop them or anything. Even in the normal situation in your home or your observatory if you're lucky enough to have one. So I use this oldie uh, tool bag for this. It's flexible, at the same time it's big enough and wide enough, right the size for the uh, housing. Uh, most of my eyepieces. This is my Max Vision 40 millimeter uh, eyepiece, 68 degrees. I use it as a viewfinder eyepiece. And these are the APM 20 and 13 millimeter 100 degree eyepieces, and it was 13 and 8 millimeter eyepieces. At this time of the year, which is the springtime, and we use we see a lot of galaxies, we are looking outward toward the uh, uh, intergalactic space. These are the eyepieces that are useful for, I found them useful. This also has another kind of view, 38 millimeter, 70 degrees eyepiece. This is another one of the good ones that I use as a uh, finder eyepiece. Of course, when I'm using this, probably I don't use that one. That's really good. That's really good. That's superb. Uh, I may use also Morpheus, depending. But when you have Aetos or APM13, Morpheus doesn't come in too much use. I use this also as a fun, just to see how it will look. Surprisingly good views. Celestron Silver Top 50mm. 
and I try to test this to see if it works with the Dobsonian and the diffuse nebula. Practically, no, don't use it because this is a, a for planetary use. On the moon, bright objects like planets is good. And faint fuzzies, no, you cannot even focus it simply because you don't see where they are and the magnification will be too high. So, this is my eyepiece case for carrying to the field. And this is the appearance of the uh, M51 uh, pair is optical in optical wavelengths by the Hubble Space Telescope, then the X ray. Uh, captured by the Chandra orbital telescope and they are now superimposed on each other. Enjoy this view, it's nice. And here you can see the astrophotos of this uh, pair of galaxies. You can see actually the other one, the smaller member of this com uh, star system, actually has uh, arms. You can see it, they're interacting really well.